Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you all to the official opening of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital today. As usual, whenever we have a distinguished guest, the sun shines. And in this past month of rain, we are indeed fortunate today that it, the weather is as it is. It's a great pleasure and honour for me, ma'am, to welcome you to this trust and to thank you for agreeing to open our new hospital. A building alone is not a hospital. A hospital is about its people, about the patients we treat from the most complex trauma, from cancers and from very rare conditions, right through to simple procedures. And that care is delivered by the dedicated and professional staff that are proud to, I'm proud to say work in this trust. But one of the successful features of this project and why it works as well as it did is that we literally had thousands of people involved in the planning of the building. And so it's too many people that we can mention by name today. But they know who they are and they should be rightly be proud because we are of all the effort that went in. And in 2009, we proudly announced the name of the new hospital would be the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, which is by far the most popular choice of patients, public, staff, and our stakeholder partner organizations. In June 2010, we moved our first patient in from Selly Oak, and I'm proud to say that patient is here today. And we only finally can finish moving in earlier this year when our laboratories moved over. So to show the Queen Elizabeth in action, I'd now like to show a short video. In the late 90s, it became clear that the city of Birmingham needed a new purpose-built healthcare facility to serve the growing needs of its population. The teams at the Queen Elizabeth and Selly Oak Hospitals had a clear vision for the future. Some 10 years later, following the input of thousands of members of staff who were involved in the design and planning, as well as the clinical and non-clinical moves, that vision became a reality. On the 16th of June 2010, Birmingham's first new acute hospital in 70 years opened its doors, ahead of time and on budget. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital Birmingham, named after the Queen Mother, cost £545 million and is the largest single-site hospital in the UK, providing a world-class environment in which to deliver world-class care to the 700,000 patients it treats each year. QEHB is a major trauma centre, taking the most critically injured patients from across the region, many of whom arrive at the hospital by air ambulance. Some 88,000 patients are treated in A&E each year, or are seen in the 72-bedded clinical decision unit, where they are assessed and undergo initial investigations to decide whether they need to be admitted to hospital. QEHB underwent the NHS's largest purchase of cutting-edge imaging equipment, spending some £22 million on the most sophisticated scanning and x-ray machines available. The department covers an area equivalent to nine tennis courts, carrying out over 270,000 images per year. A state-of-the-art super lab the size of a football pitch has been constructed beneath the new QEHB. Housed on level minus one of the landmark building, the laboratory has the capacity to carry out nine million bits, bugs and blood tests per year. Level minus one is also where our 96 porters, 390 housekeeping assistants and 164 catering staff start their day with a briefing before cleaning the wards, transporting patients and equipment around the vast hospital or preparing meals for staff, patients and visitors. The millions of supplies processed by our logistics teams are delivered daily to the service yard, while our pharmacy teams support all our wards and departments. No one wants to stay in hospital longer than is absolutely necessary, and one of the key drivers when designing the new hospital was to decrease the length of stay for patients pre- and post-surgery and to increase the number of patients having procedures completed and discharged home within 23 hours of admission. Ambulatory care treats over 34,000 patients a year. As a major trauma centre and the hospital that treats all injured military personnel returning from combat, access to theatres is essential and QEHB has 23 of them in its main suite, performing half a million hours of surgery each year, undertaking nearly 30,000 procedures. After undergoing an operation in theatres, 
Those patients who have had complex surgery will be returned to the critical care or burns unit to recover from their procedure. QEHB has 100 critical care beds, which makes it the largest unit in Europe treating the sickest patients. The unit is split into four areas with 25 beds in each area with one-to-one -one nursing care. The number of people suffering from kidney disease is increasing nationally and is particularly prevalent in Birmingham due in part to its diverse ethnic mix. Some 1,000 patients are dialysed three times a week in the purpose-built suite at QEHB and its 10 satellite centres around the region. There are 29 wards in the QEHB, the majority of which have 36 beds, and 44% of those are single rooms, with the rest being four bedded rooms, all with ensuite bathroom facilities. The types of patients cared for in these wards are transplant, multi-speciality medicine, trauma, neurology, stroke, plastics, breast, cancer, heart, liver, urology, kidney, ear, nose and throat, maxillofacial, vascular and elderly care. QEHB is very proud to host the Royal Centre for Defence Medicine and not only trains hundreds of nurses and doctors within the organisation, but treats all the injured military personnel that are injured in combat and non-combat activities. Over the last 10 years, QEHB has cared for 17,500 military inpatients and 61,500 outpatients, with hundreds of patients surviving previously fatal injuries as a result of the unique partnership between the nurses, doctors and support staff from RCDM and QEHB. The road to recovery for military patients, many of whom have lost at least two limbs, starts as early as possible in therapies at the QEHB, with patients being put through their paces just weeks after arriving on a plane from Afghanistan using equipment funded by QEHB charity. The Young Persons Unit on Level 6 provides specialist age-appropriate care as well as emotional, educational, psychological and social support to young people aged 16 to 24 who have been diagnosed with cancer. Again, thanks to the generosity of QEHB Charity and the Teenage Cancer Trust, hundreds of thousands of pounds have been donated towards the creation of YPU. Radiotherapy is a key component of cancer treatment and to ensure that our patients get the best possible therapy available, QEHB and its charity have purchased two Tomotherapy HD machines at a cost of £6 million. Birmingham is the only place in Europe where this treatment that more accurately attacks the tumour while reducing damage to the surrounding tissues is available. As the UK's population grows older, the demands for the care of the elderly and patients with dementia increase. And QEHB is very proud of the work it is doing for our mums, dads and grandparents. Clinically focused initiatives include the introduction of red trays for those who need help with eating, an activities coordinator funded by QEHB charity who organises activities every day for the hospital's older patients, including regular bingo sessions, painting and origami. The chaplaincy team visit patients and relatives on the ward, or alternatively staff, patients and visitors can go to the Faith and Community Centre to pray or seek some sanctuary. In a great example of public and private sector partnership, Balfour Beatty and QEHB Charity have paid for the building and kitting out of the centre at a cost of more than £1 million. Also on level one is the therapist suite, which provides a number of services for patients at every stage of their rehabilitation. These include physiotherapy, nutrition and dietetics, occupational therapy, speech and language therapy and podiatry. By far the largest department in the hospital is outpatients, which sees up to 2,000 patients a day. On arrival, a patient registers for their appointment using a self-check-in kiosk, which ensures their personal details are correct and then points them to the appropriate waiting area. The staff on the information desk deal with an average 150 inquiries an hour, while switchboard handle over 5,000 calls a day. And, if for some reason you still need some help or reassurance, you can always rely on our highly visible Balfour Beatty Workforce Security Guards and our dedicated volunteers.
Having seen the hospital in action, Your Majesty, I would now like to invite you to officially open the hospital by unveiling a piece of artwork we've had commissioned to commemorate the occasion. Thank you. 